Welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast, made for women who want their healthiest years to be ahead of them, not behind them. Join your host, Courtney Townley, right now as she breaks down the fairy tale health story you have been chasing all of your life into sensible action steps and lasting change. Welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast. This is your host, Courtney Townley, as always. I'm so glad you're here, and I deeply appreciate your listenership. If you love this episode today, please consider sharing it with another woman who you think would benefit from the message. Now, today, I'd like to talk about something that I often say, which is the service that I provide helps women to put their healthiest years ahead of them and not behind them. I want to get into the meat and potatoes of what I mean by that. And more importantly, I want to share with you the linchpin for putting your healthiest years ahead of you and not behind you. The reason I got inspired to do this episode on this topic specifically is because I consult with a lot of women every week who are pursuing better health while simultaneously believing that their healthiest years are in the past. So they end up trying to return to a version of themselves from the past rather than evolving and growing into the best version of themselves yet. A lot of the women I consult with are spending more time thinking about who they have been than they are thinking about who they want to become. And this is problematic for a lot of reasons. The biggest reason is that when you believe the best of something is in the past, your brain will go to work seeking and even creating evidence to prove that that is true. In other words, it becomes impossible to become your healthiest version now if you believe that your healthiest self is in the past. So the linchpin to putting your healthiest years ahead of you is to become future focused and not past focused. And I got to tell you, a lot of women that I work with have never considered what they want for their future in terms of health. Because they're so busy referencing their past to determine what their health story is going to be. What you need now at this age and stage of life, I have said this so many times on the podcast, is very likely not what you needed 5, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Because humans, again, are multidimensional and dynamic. We are always changing. And when we cram ourselves into tight little boxes that no longer fit our life, there's a lot of unfortunate consequences that come out of that. And what I mean by tiny boxes that no longer fit our life are rigid strategies that no longer, that maybe never took into consideration the wholeness of our life. So the consequences of using rigid strategies from the past is that we, number one, we rebel against them because eventually they become like that itchy sweater that you just want to take off and that inner rebel comes out. Using rigid strategies from the past that no, that don't consider the wholeness of our life now create a lot of integrity pain. 
and integrity pain I talk about on almost every episode is you feeling like the strategies and choices that you are making do not fit the truth of who you are now. So boxes, rigid strategies, can very easily become cages. And nobody wants to live in a cage. That is not how humans thrive. That's not how anything thrives. Who you are now is not who you were in the past. But if you are always chasing a version of yourself from the past, you're going to stunt your own growth potential. Worse yet, when we reference our past for strategies that may have worked for a period of time, what we really end up doing is seeking out evidence for why we can't succeed now. Because let's face it, if the strategy worked, why would you be revisiting it? So what we end up doing is looking back at what we deem the healthiest period of our life and really finding evidence for why we can't succeed now. I'll give you a really concrete example of this, which many of you will be able to identify with, which is around weight loss or fat loss. You use a certain methodology to lose X number of pounds. You regain the weight. And then two things happen. You convince yourself the strategy worked, which it didn't. (laughs) Because, well, it might have worked temporarily, but it certainly didn't work long term. And secondly, your brain goes crazy looking at that as a failure and convincing you that there's no way you can succeed now because you didn't succeed then. And when we convince ourselves we can't succeed now because of looking at the past, we end up doing a lot of interesting things. Number one, we buffer. So buffering is kind of distracting yourself from the reality of our life. When we feel like a failure, when we feel like we can't succeed, when we feel defeated, we often reach for things that make us temporarily feel better. So this is where a lot of overeating, over drinking, over shopping, over Netflixing, all of that comes in. We get super reactive because our chemistry gets thrown off by those things. And all of this is driven by the fact that we are focusing on our past rather than really considering our future. You can't go back to the past, period. Trying to return to a version of yourself from the past is like saying that the best of you is in the past. And that's really sad. That makes me not even want to get up tomorrow morning. Saying that the best of something is in the past limits our possibility for the future. It really robs us of the opportunity of stepping into what could be. Now, I don't know how many times on this podcast I have mentioned James Clear's book called Atomic Habits. It's a great book about behavior change. If you've never read it, I highly recommend it. But one of the things I share in almost all of my courses from that book is that behavior change is identity change. I'm going to repeat that. Behavior change is identity change. And what is identity really? Identity is the byproduct of the actions you take. It is what you consistently do. If you run every day, part of your identity is that you're a runner. If you are a parent and you show up for your kids all the time, I bet a part of your identity is being a parent, being a mom, being a dad. But the way we talk about identity is as if it's not a choice. 
So we argue for our identity. And here's what I mean by that. I constantly hear women say things like, this is just who I am. I have always been this way. Well, if you have always been this way, it's because you have always made certain choices. If this is who you are, it's because who you are is a result of your choices. And the great thing about this is that we get to decide at any point to change our choices. And when we start changing our choices on a regular basis, we change who we are. Who you are is a byproduct of your past behaviors, of your past choices, of your past thinking. You are not sentenced to a certain identity unless you keep making the same choices. And you certainly can. Because I bet there's a lot of choices you've been making that are serving you really well, that are really useful to how you want to feel and move through the world. And there's a lot of choices you keep making that go against the grain of who you want to be in the world. You can decide to be something different at any time. And for a lot of you, what's standing in the way of putting your healthiest years ahead of you is simply deciding. Simply deciding to step in to the person you want to be. And once you decide, you get to practice. Because I know it would be lovely if all we had to do was decide and then everything just changed from there on out. We all know that's not how it works. (laughs) So what I want you to hear really clearly is you get to change your mind. You get to renovate your life at any time. You can choose to allow yourself to change and grow. And I really hope you do. But referencing your past to do that is not going to help you change the way you show up. It's going to reinforce the way you've been showing up. So let's talk a little bit about some really clear steps you can take to become more future focused. And then I'll answer some questions that kind of come up around this conversation. So the first thing I always suggest is allow yourself to want. What do you want for your future? Not just in terms of things you want, but how do you want to feel? How do you want to think about yourself? How do you want to think about your life moving forward? In other words, who do you want to be? Because you get to decide. And it's so funny. I often give my clients this exercise to just put pen to page and write a list of like maybe 25 to 30 things they really want for their future. And that list, by the way, can include things you already have. So for me, you know, I want to be married to my husband. I want to live in Montana. There are things I already have that I definitely want for my future. And there are also things I want for my future that I don't currently have. So some of those things are, you know, financial goals. Some of those things are having confidence in certain areas of my life that I don't feel very confident in right now. I want to feel more peaceful in my future. That's something I've been working on for a really long time. Being at peace with my choices and how I'm moving through the world, which I really believe is an ongoing practice. But when I do this exercise with clients, so often we get stuck, right? A lot of women rumble with creating a list like this because they've never practiced allowing themselves to want 
for their future. Either because they're so focused on their past or they don't think about themselves at all. Once you come up with some desires for the future, pick something on that list that you don't currently have. And ask yourself the question, why don't you have that thing yet? And I promise you what you will find are a lot of thoughts that are getting in the way of you creating that result. Because you don't believe it's possible. Because you think you're going to upset somebody. Because you are unorganized. I have no idea what your thoughts are going to be, but I guarantee what you will discover if you ask yourself that question is that there are a lot, there's a lot of thinking between you right now and creating that result for the future. And thinking can be changed. Thinking is something that we can take ownership of because the way we think hugely influences our behavior. And this is, of course, the the real crux of the work that I do with students and clients is really working on that, that thinking piece so they can feel inspired to take actions that will move their life in that direction. So once you've picked something off of your want list, and you've asked yourself the question, why don't I have that thing yet? And you've gotten clear on some thoughts that are in your way. Try imagining that you have already created that thing. So let's just say that your goal is to, well, I'll, I'll use an example that actually came up in a, in a coaching call recently. I was consulting with a client who said that something that she really wants in the next six months to a year is that she really wants to plan this trip with her husband. Because for her, it is a, it's in dedication to feeling connected to her husband and doing something really nice for him. So what I asked her to do is go to the future and imagine you are already on the trip. Imagine you're already where you want to be with your husband. How did you do it? How did you create that result for your life? Literally reference your future self to mentor you in terms of how to make this possible. So if you are imagining that you've already created the result, planning this trip, changing your body composition, moving across country, feeling at more peace with who you are, whatever the thing is. Ask the version of you who has already created that result. What do I need to believe? What do I need to feel? How do I need to act every day in order to get to make this possible? And you will find your answers. I know it sounds so bizarre, but I'm telling you, try it on. And then the fun really begins. You get to commit. You get to lean into discomfort. You get to practice new behaviors every day. To create that result which will ignite your confidence and you will go after more things you want for your future rather than constantly trying to get back to the past, which you'll never succeed at because you can't. You can't go back. So I call these the four C's. Commit, have courage, develop consistency, and then, of course, you build confidence. And on this note, I'm just going to throw this out there. 
On June 29th, I am actually hosting a workshop for the public. It's going to be a paid workshop, but it's only 20 bucks. And it's going to be online, so it doesn't matter where you are. You can participate in this workshop, and it's going to be all about igniting confidence. So if you are someone who needs help in this arena, that might be a really great thing for you to attend. And I will be sending – if you're on my email list, you will get notification as soon as you can register for the workshop. Seating will be limited, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And if you're not on my email list, you can get on my email list by going to my website – and registering for Healthiest Year Yet, which you really can't avoid because it's a big pop-up on my website. (laughs) So, And if you're already on my email list, you will find out all about that event through a upcoming email. So I want to address just a couple questions that often come up around being future-focused. So one of the questions I often get is, won't focusing on my future rob me of being present now? And I always say that actually knowing where you want to go in the future and who you want to develop yourself into becoming actually informs the present. It allows you to show up with intention now. So it's not that we focus on our future and we stay focused there forevermore. That's all we think about. We take time to focus on where we want to go, who we want to become, so we can show up in ways now that are in tribute to that. Another question I often get is, what if I don't know what I want? Well, wanting, allowing yourself to want, allowing yourself to desire, allowing yourself to imagine is all a practice. So practice, practice asking yourself often and much, what do I really want? And again, we're not thinking necessarily of material things, although that certainly can be on your list. More specifically, how do I want to think about myself in my life? How do I want to feel? How do I want to show up in my life? What are some of the results I want for my life? Those questions may help you in your practice of wanting. And then another, it's not really so much as a question as a statement that I want to speak to is, this doesn't work for me because my brain always goes to the past. Well, of course it does. (laughs) Everybody's brain does. Why? Because you have so much practice referencing your past. It's what we've done for so many years that your default mode is to reference your past, which is why we have to stay awake. We have to stay conscious of how we're thinking because the second we go unconscious, we stop being aware, your brain will always utilize the easiest pathway, which is the pathway that has been practiced the most. So it's not that it doesn't work for you. It's that you maybe don't have enough practice to see the results of it yet. And yet is the key word there, my friends. If you are someone who wants to put your healthiest years ahead of you, this is the work that I do. It is the work that we do deeply and consistently inside of Rumble and Rise. So Rumble and Rise is my paid membership community. It's 59 bucks a month. It is packed with resources and incredible masterclasses and remarkable women who are really taking ownership of how they move through the world. So if you want to join that community, you can check out all the details at graceandgrit.com forward slash ready to rumble. So I will just give you that invitation. I would love you to accept it. It is, I promise you will not regret it. That's it, my friends. That's all I have for you today. I hope it gives you something to sort of chew on. And I hope you take the practice piece to heart and put pen to page and start getting to know what you want for your future and why you don't think it's possible. I'll see you again soon. Take care.
Thank you for listening to the Grace and Grit podcast. It is time to mend the fabric of the female health story. And it starts with you taking radical responsibility for your own self-care. You are worth the effort. And with a little grace and grit, anything is possible.